Yeah, so true. Well, it's the top of the hour, so I'm going to welcome you all to TechSoup, whether you've been here as a member of one month, one year, one day, welcome. Um, this is a new member orientation and the Q&A. We'd love to answer your questions that you have about TechSoup. Before we get started, we're going to go to the next slide and show you how can, you can engage. I know many of you have been to our webinars, but you are on mute because this is webinar style instead of Zoom. So if you have a question, put it in the Q&A section. And you can always type in the chat as well, but we'd love to um, save your questions for the end. We are going to email you the video and the slides because there's some hyperlinks on these slides that you can click and gain some more insights once this is over. If you need the closed caption, just type on the CC button right at the bottom of your Zoom screen. I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to Nick. He's going to introduce everybody. I'm going to read the assignments. I'm the webinar producer here, and he's going to introduce over to our team. Have a great webinar, everybody. Hi, everybody, and thanks for joining us today. Uh, my name is Nick Finn. I'm a senior director here at TechSoup, um, and uh, I'm joined by Aretha Simons, who you've met already, a wonderful webinar host, uh, and then also Kevin Mulhall and Kelly Garrett, both on staff at TechSoup and um, who uh, work on the front lines of helping um, nonprofits solve key tech problems day to day. Um, and we'll learn more about what they do. Um, today's webinar is a welcome to TechSoup new member orientation. Um, and uh, my hope is that we give you a, a good overview of the different ways you can engage with TechSoup, the different ways we can be helpful. Um, and uh, nonprofits often work together and sometimes uh, those relationships require a little bit of understanding on the front end so that you can make the most of how those relationships work. Uh, TechSoup is a 501c3 nonprofit, like most of you on this call are working for a 501c3 or, or at least representing one in, in some capacity here. Um, before we get going, I want to just uh, bring up a couple of buzzwords, terms that get popped around in these nonprofit technology circles and just create some basic alignments and understanding about what they really mean. Um, you'll hear a lot about digital transformation sometimes in this space and and really to you know make it a little more accessible, let's just think of that as just becoming a more tech forward nonprofit. Um, you know, who who embraces some tools and really tries to find ways that technology can help it to accomplish its mission, to execute its programming, whatever it is you need. Um, another common term you hear in, in nonprofit technology circles is the notion of digital resilience. Um, and <clears throat> something that's certainly caught more attention and more buzz in kind of our COVID, post-COVID world. Um, but really what that is about, again, is like embracing technology as a way to keep your nonprofit functioning powerfully and adequately in whatever space it works in, right? So that it can respond to an increasingly dynamic world that seems to change faster and faster every day, <clears throat> you know, even to the extent that technology itself, right, changes faster and faster every single day and get, and grows in complexity and in ways that can be really hard to actually keep up with sometimes. Um, but yeah, that notion of digital resilience is that, you know, you are strongly embedded in a digital environment. You can withstand shocks to the system. Um, civil society is another, another term you'll hear quite a bit about from TechSoup as well as in other spaces as well. Um, and really what that is, is just it's the non-governmental, non-business people and organizations who are engaged with the world, like trying to make an impact in their community, trying to make change, supporting people in some particular aspect. Um, it, it's the common people and our effort to build a better world, right? Um, and then cloud adoption, uh, pretty much a no-brainer at this point. But um, again, this is just using tools that are more embedded in the cloud, accessible through the World Wide Web, the internet, versus things that are just loaded on a local computer or local machine, um, and which if that machine itself no longer functioned, you would lose access to that data and information. So cloud adoption is just like, it is a more resilient way, really, of having a digital footprint for your nonprofit. So let's get into the meat of what is TechSoup. As I've mentioned already, we are a 501c3 nonprofit organization in the United States. 
Um, and we are also one of the primary conveners of the TechSoup Global Network. I'm not gonna talk a ton about the Global Network today because the audience on today's webinar is primarily the United States, but I will say that TechSoup does operate around the world. Um, and we partner with NGOs and other technology nonprofits in other countries around the world to execute the same kind of mission and programming that we're gonna talk about today in the United States. And, and it really is built around some of those core terms that I just shared. It's building digital resilience. It's increasing access to the internet itself through uh, relationships. Um, it is helping nonprofits in other parts of the world solve whatever the local community issue is that they work on and to make that technology accessible to them and help them figure out how to use it and how to do it well. And often this is about connecting people. Um, but that is a global network view of TechSoup. And, you know, uh, we're all extremely excited about that work um, because it means that we're, you know, really helping on a global scale versus just like in country. Um, our mission, you know, like you representing a nonprofit, we have a mission, a mission statement as well. Uh, but to boil it down again into more accessible terms, it really is to support nonprofits and NGOs as they work with technology, whatever that technology is, right, um, with a goal of using it to make a more equitable planet. And, and for TechSoup, that equitable planet language really is an important part of our mission statement because um, we think we have to set a very high North Star. Tech is so powerful, so let's make sure we do as much good with it as we possibly can. And so that equitable planet piece of it is important for us. Um, one of the ways that we support nonprofits is that we host a catalog of technology offers. Lots of major tech companies aspire to have more nonprofits use things that they build. And so they make offers available to nonprofits to save a certain amount of money or get a product perhaps for free. Um, the thing is, how hard would it be to speak to every tech company out there and, and learn what specific offer they have? And what TechSoup has tried to do is aggregate these offers into one space so that nonprofits can come to TechSoup and be able to see different offers and philanthropic discounts available to them for these tech companies. And over time, of course, that's grown and we continue to add more items to that catalog. Um, some of the biggest brands you may have heard of in there already are, are like Microsoft, Dell, Intuit, Adobe, and we'll talk more about them. We also have learned over time that of course, just acquiring new software or hardware is not enough. That doesn't mean that you're really using and adopting technology. Uh, in fact, sometimes it's what you do after you get it that is more important because if staff don't understand how to use a tool or if we haven't implemented a tool properly, or maybe we chose the wrong license for the tool because we didn't know which one we should get, um, TechSoup's developed a host of services over time to support nonprofits as you work with technology so that you can manage it better, implement it better, choose the right version of it, help your staff understand how to use it, learn what the best practice is. How do you use this thing? What does it do? How is it helpful, right? Trying to help nonprofits answer some of those key questions. Um, we create in that uh, vein as well, you know, educational resources. Um, to help nonprofits answer those questions as well. Um, and then we, of course, have our own slate of grant-based programming where we work with major foundations and companies to dive more deeply on specific items, like, for instance, maybe um, helping organizations that serve survivors of domestic violence with technology that protects privacy, right? Things like that. So... Moving a little more deeply into some of the ways that TechSoup can help you directly, I want to talk about the TechSoup catalog where we have some of these technology philanthropic offers that I mentioned earlier, right? Um, if you go to TechSoup.org, you can access that by clicking on that Browse Catalog button, right? Pretty clear. CTA, as it's known in the biz, right? Like, uh, thing that you click on. Um, and that will take you to the TechSoup catalog of offers. What's important to know 
is that before you can access those offers, you need to have qualified your nonprofit with TechSoup. That means you got to go through a process with us that verifies or validates that you are indeed a US 501c3 nonprofit, you know, and that you meet the very bare minimums uh, required in order to access this technology product, which is explicitly for nonprofits and not for other organizations, right? Um, that's an important process. In TechSoup, we call it qualification. Um, once you are qualified with TechSoup, some of these offers also depend on some very basic eligibility criteria, which can involve your mission and your budget size. We'll talk more about that later. So this is a live view of the TechSoup site at the moment, right? And this is the browser catalog button that you would be able to get to that takes you into the catalog. If I click on that right now, Let's see if it will take a second to load this here. Now you're at the product catalog and you've got a landing page with you know some basic high profile offers at the top. You scroll down, there's some of the standard um, most popular offers that organizations look for from TechSoup. Um, we do have a hardware section, um, which we'll talk about more in a little bit. Um, and then here at the bottom, you have the services options available to you. Um, you can browse it by category, right? Look at different products within particular categories, or you can take a look at it here by the name of the donor organization, right? These are philanthropic offers. So what brand is providing access to this offer? All organized in alphabetical order. Nothing too crazy about that. So let's talk a little bit about Microsoft because they have been one of TechSoup's major partners since almost the inception of TechSoup. Um, they challenged us to think big very early on about how we could best serve nonprofits. And of course, you know, the Microsoft Windows operating system and its suite of uh, platforms under Microsoft Office and, you know, far beyond that now. They remain some of the most popular offers at TechSoup, and you know, uh, hundreds of thousands of nonprofits around the world are using Microsoft products every day, right? Um, let's see if I can get. So Microsoft 365 um, is the modern version of of what you might think of as Microsoft Office. It's the suite of productivity platforms like uh, you know PowerPoint, Microsoft Word, Excel, all the standard things that you use in a cloud-based environment, right? You can have a local version as well. If you have Microsoft 365 deployed in your organization, you know, folks are gonna be able to use these shared features between each other. Um, and it's a very common thing uh, that nonprofits acquire through TechSoup. And, and when they do acquire it through TechSoup, we're able to provide a fairly strong, robust set of supporting services so that nonprofits aren't left just trying to figure out this powerful but complex platform all on their own. They can turn to TechSoup and we can help them get it configured the way that they need it most. Again, like I was mentioning earlier, maybe help you choose the right kind of license, not make a mistake in that regard. And sometimes that means you can save some money, which is great. Um, and of course, then the Windows Pro full operating system also available through TechSoup. Um, both of them uh, are live links in this deck and um, <clears throat> you'll get a copy of this deck after the webinar is over today and you'll be able to click through directly to offers on the website if you wanna see them and um, hopefully that can be a helpful way to find some of the stuff you might be most interested in. Uh, another major brand we work with and who've been a big, strong supporter of nonprofits is Adobe. If you have come up in the nonprofit world as a communications person, particularly if you're like a designer or a video person, um, somebody who works on web pages, something like that, it's extremely likely you've worked with Adobe's Creative Cloud Suite by now. Um, that is one of the offers available through TechSoup. Um, uh, but not everybody knows how to use Creative Cloud. Um, we do have other stuff from Adobe that's important to call out. 
Acrobat Pro DC, which is sort of like the standard for uh, manipulating PDF files. That's a format that Adobe created. Um, and then Adobe Express is their new um, sort of easier to use uh, multimedia creation platform. Um, and it's actually available at no cost right now through TechSoup, which is just great, right? So um, super way for a nonprofit to be able to quickly add a new tool to the arsenal of communications tools. Um, you know, I haven't used Adobe Express myself. Um, my understanding is it, it's really great for like social media content that you might need to develop, any digital content, stuff like that. Um, and, and again, like the interface is, is built to be easier to use perhaps than Creative Cloud. Creative Cloud is extremely powerful, but but could be a little overwhelming for some folks who don't have the training to write really know how to use some of those tools. Um, Intuit QuickBooks is another huge uh, offer in the TechSoup catalog that thousands of nonprofits have taken advantage of and, and many more will. Um, you know, it was surprising for us to learn even during COVID, there were still some nonprofits out there who were still relying on like paper and pencil as their main accounting system. And of course, once remote work hit 100% and you couldn't be in the office together. Um, it was just a really stark reminder of how that is flawed. So like going back to that notion of digital resiliency, right? Having a cloud-based accounting system like Intuit QuickBooks as a way to track your nonprofit's finances is just a much, much better way to go. Um, and uh, I, I think today I would say that this is probably uh, the most popular offer in the TechSoup catalog. It's QuickBooks Online, $75 per year. Um, there is an advanced version of it as well available through TechSoup, but um, yeah, you, you sort of can't go wrong with QuickBooks, to be honest. Um, oh, sorry. There are many other brands in the TechSoup catalog. Um, I highlighted three of the most popular, um, but one of the fun things about some of this tech is that uh, lots of nonprofits need different, more specialized things. Um, I encourage you, if you have not already, to just take a look through the catalog and uh, you may stumble across a couple of things that actually would be super helpful for your nonprofit that I haven't highlighted specifically in today's presentation. Like I mentioned earlier, uh, we do also have access to hardware offers at TechSoup. Um, and uh, those are available first by navigating to the product catalog tab and then they're available from there. Um, I'm trying to get that added to the home page, but don't have it quite yet. Um, the hardware catalog has new and used laptops. Um, the use is the refurbished uh, line that I'm gonna talk about in a minute. Um, we have relationships with Dell, with Lenovo, and with HP to provide discounts to nonprofits through our catalog. Um, but a while ago, and by that I mean, you know, 20 years maybe, um, one of the cool things again about TechSoup being a nonprofit is that we have a, a greater scope and greater view of like why we would want to do business in a certain way. Um, and a long time ago, um, we had uh, folks who were pretty passionate about the environment really talking on staff in TechSoup about how it seemed such a shame that all this electronic waste was just getting dumped in landfills um, for all sorts of reasons. Um, and out of it came a constructive idea that, you know, maybe the newer stuff could just be refurbished and then provided at a lower cost um, to well, you know, whoever would need it. And in our case, we were proposing like perhaps nonprofits could save some money by getting refurbished hardware that might not be today's most current model. Maybe it's two or three years old, but it's perfectly serviceable. The chips work, the drives work, the electronics are robust inside the box. Um, so that's our refurbished hardware program. Um, and uh, it's done quite well for many years now, uh, so much so that in fact, we are no longer the only uh, providers of refurbished hardware. Um, and it's a major piece of the global economy, actually. Um, but we do have access to all sorts of refurbished units. Um, I encourage you to check that out if that's something that would also be helpful. 
As I mentioned earlier, sometimes getting the hardware and the software really is only the start of the challenge, right? It's really, what do you do next to educate staff to use it, to configure it, to manage that platforms, have it do the things that you think it should be able to do in a way that should be helpful, again, to your programming, for your staff, or you know, broader execution of your mission. Um, and that's TechSoup services. Um, services are available from the main drop-down menu. Um, and uh, I, I will tell you that already this drop-down is quite outdated because we have added tons of new services over the past six months. Um, but I'm going to highlight a few again of the highest profile ones because I think it's, you know, can't talk about all of them. We can talk about a few that matter. And again, I encourage you to come back to the site and check out what's available there. Um, the first one to call out is called Help Desk. It's a monthly subscription. You, there's a you know an annual version too um, that saves you a little bit of money. Uh, it is basically to have TechSoup on call to help you with a specific thing you've got in your office that seems to really need like extra love and care, whatever that might be. It could it, it could be like a particular computer. Maybe there's a printer that seems to always need that driver tweaked somehow that doesn't make sense. Help desk is like low level one item support. Um, a more complex further reaching solution is managed IT um, where you work with TechSoup really to build out a plan and manage your entire IT stack, right? I'm not talking about troubleshooting a printer now. We're talking about like, what's the big picture of how all your tech works together and, and best optimized. Um, a newer service we started providing is the domain registration service. You founded a, a new nonprofit and one of the first things you know you have to do at some point is get a website up, right? Because you got to tell people about your nonprofit. You have to give donors a place where they might support you. Um, there's all sorts of communications assets you need to, you know, maintain on your website, right? First step is like, where is it going to live? What's your domain? Good marketing practice would be, you know, as we do, use TechSoup, but, you know, your own organization's name as the domain. How do I register my domain? We can help you with that, right? Um, it's one of those technical front end pieces that you have to get done before we can even think about doing your site. Um, and uh, we can help you get that domain registered so that you can then work with it. Um, like I mentioned earlier on Office 365, one of the most complex platforms out there, we have support services for email and data migration if you're moving to that platform. Um, we also have this fun digital assessment tool that you can get to in the nav. It walks organizations through a set of questions around different practice areas that might use technology in their nonprofit, helps you build out an assessment of how digitally mature or, you know, well-constructed your nonprofit is in different areas. Um, and, uh, you know, sometimes that can be a great way to then turn to your board or donors and suggest that, like, you know, here's an area that we really need to do a better job in for our nonprofit, and we need to raise some money to support a tool that we need or a staff person that we need to do that work. Um, finally, you know, a as a marketing and communications person myself, I have a bias, and that is that I think that technology's primary value to nonprofits is really as a communications tool, right? It's a way to talk to the world, to the people we serve, to the donors who support our work, maybe to government agencies or members of the media, whoever it is that we have to talk to. Um, we have a lot of new tools that we didn't have 25 years ago, right? Like email lists or digital advertising, or like I just said, your website itself or text messaging on phones, all these different communications avenues. Um, and of course, leveraging those, using them properly, requires a little bit of expertise. Um, and so over time, one of the specialized areas of services that we've uh, built out is uh, to support these digital marketing needs of nonprofits, like the website consultation and development, um, help you assess kind of like what you've got right now, where could it go, are there holes you need to think about? Um, 
if you're doing actual outreach, you know, beyond just like fielding traffic on your website, but actively reaching out and talking to folks, maybe through an email campaign, you can help with an assessment of how that nonprofit marketing stack is working for you. And again, like get a discussion on what's possible, what could you do better, what would you like to change? Um, lots of nonprofits try to take advantage of the Google Ad Grant, which is a limited search grant that you can use. Um, but uh, if you know how to optimize your use, you could soak up to $10,000 worth of free search advertising on a monthly level. I, I believe that's what the number still is. Um, but in fact, it, you know, it's always harder to actually do it than just talk about it. Um, and uh, the Google Ad Grant service is there to actually help you figure out how to use all of that bandwidth that you have access to, because lots of nonprofits struggle with that and aren't able to actually use the full amount of that or just need help thinking through like exactly how should I best leverage this, uh, this grant. Um, finally, I wanna call out um, a newer offer from TechSoup called Quad. Um, Quad is sort of a future version that TechSoup is evolving into and toward um, where we try to bring the best of what we have to offer all into one place, um, including like expert technical support, um, even greater savings on some key offers, um, a more robust uh, platform for communicating with other nonprofits that are in the same mission area or perhaps even just geographically close to you. Um, uh, it is a great way to quickly engage with TechSoup at a high level um, instead of just poking around at the catalog or taking a look at a webinar online. Quad just brings you right into like what is the today version of what nonprofits and technology need to be talking about. Um, and so I encourage you to take a look at that. I think probably uh, there may be a link being dropped into chat on that. Um, so with that, I now want to turn things over to um, my colleague, Kelly Garrett. Um, and uh, before I do, um, just a quick overview that Kelly works in the account management group. The account management group are the folks that when you reach out to TechSoup, you need particular help because your password's not working in your TechSoup account or the order that you seem to have placed last week still hasn't been fulfilled with an email or something like that. Kelly and her team help you manage your relationship with TechSoup, right? That is different than what Kevin Mulhall will talk about after Kelly. Kevin and his team specialize in supporting you more in the products that you've gotten from TechSoup, right? So Kelly's team helps you with your TechSoup relationship. Kevin's team helps you with the product you got from TechSoup, if I can be basically what the differentiation is. So with that, Kelly, it's all yours. And I will uh, hide myself and shut my mic off here for a minute. Thank you for that great introduction. Hey, everyone. Hope you're doing well. Staying warm out there in that, this winter season. Um, as uh, Nick said, I'm Kelly Garrett. I am the Associate Manager for the Account Management Group. That's part of our Client Services Department. Um, when you reach out to TechSoup, you're talking to us. We're the cust we handle customer service, account management, very basic questions about programs, um, products, things like that. And Kevin's team handles more in-depth stuff related to products or programs. Um, I'm going to grab the next slide, please. Perfect. So one thing we like to highlight, which Nick kind of went over earlier, is just navigating our website. A lot of questions that we get from our members are actually already on the website. We try to make sure we put as much information as we can out there for you so that you can self-serve. You don't have to, um, right now we have phone or chat that you can access. You don't have to wait in the chat or wait in the phone queue to get an answer. Um, so for products specifically, I always want to say, you know, we refer to this as the offer page or the product page. And that's where you've navigated through the website. You've used that magnifying glass to search for something. You've used the one of the drop downs in the top left corner to find something. You've clicked on the item that you think that you want, and it pulls up this page. Um, these pages typically look the same. There's three tabs of information. Descriptions always on the left. 
Rules eligibility restrictions are always on the right. And that middle tab's names can be um, slightly different. This one is subscription details because this is a subscription product. If it was an on-premise product, so like a one-time admin fee, you download it on your desktop, move on, like Adobe has for Photoshop or Acrobat, um, you'd see uh, system details there. Um, so you will see that change slightly depending on what type of product it is. Um, and that middle tab is always one that I recommend going to and looking at. There's a lot of detailed information, especially about subscriptions, access to discounted rates, things along those lines. Um, something to keep an eye out for is in the product name. If you ever do see something that says access to discounted rates, that indicates that you're going to pay TechSoup an admin fee. That admin fee is then going to get you access to a discounted rate that you pay directly to the partner. So QuickBooks Online here doesn't have that in the name. So the fee that you're paying to access a subscription is paid to TechSoup each year. If it said access to discounted rate, like our Zoom offer, that would mean you'd pay the admin fee to TechSoup, and then you'd go over to Zoom's website, check out with uh, the subscription that you want, and you'd apply a coupon code that gives you access to a discounted rate that you pay to um, Zoom directly. It's one of those common questions we get is, why did I pay this fee <laughs> and then have to pay somebody else? So it's something I like to highlight is, that kind of information is described on these pages. You wanna make sure you're looking at the product's name. You wanna make sure you're looking at all the information underneath it. Like it tells you who the donor partner is, which you can click on to go back to their program page, with all of their offers. You can see what categories it's linked in if you use the category dropdown. Um, you can see what platforms it's on. If it said Mac or Windows, I mean, it would only work on Mac on Windows. This says multiple platforms. That means it works on multiple platforms. It's a cloud-based product. You can access it on Mac or PC. You also see availability listed there. We do have products that go out of stock, stock even our cloud products. Um, so something to check is there is it you'll see limited availability or out of stock. It means it's out of stock. We usually get things restocked whenever the partner can provide more coupon codes, licenses, things along those lines. Um, so it's something we tell members to kind of periodically check back in to see what the availability is. Perfect. Um, Next slide, please. Perfect. So say you've looked at the product page and you haven't found the answer to your question. There's not something linked that you can go to. Or say you're having issues um, accessing your account, um, resetting your password, getting registered, anything along those lines. As Nick said, we can help answer, but we always recommend going to our TechSoup support page first. It was recently revamped brand new. We've got a lot of great information in there and you can access it whether you're logged in or not um, through the help button that's at the top right corner of TechSoup.org. Um, so that's a great place to go to find out more information. We've tried to cover all of our frequently asked questions. There's We're also starting to develop um, program specific questions in there too. So you'll see Microsoft is detailed in there. Um, I believe Autodesk has some in there as well too. And so each program we're trying to move our how-tos, our FAQs, everything's going to be in this TechSoup support page to make it really easy for you to locate information. And again, not have to sit on the queue and wait for us to answer, get to you. Um, something to keep in mind is we are a nonprofit as well. The account management group provides the customer service. Um, you know, we get to people as fast as we can. We want to make sure we're providing quick, accurate support. But we do appreciate our members' patience, understanding with our own nonprofit resources. Sometimes, especially around these holiday times, it might take us a little bit of time to get to your call or get to your chat. Um, you will be speaking to a live person for either option, but it might take a minute. So we do recommend checking out the support page first, see if you can just get your answer. And then if you need to, you can contact us um, to follow up. Next slide, please. Perfect. So this is what the TechSoup support page looks like. We've got a great search bar here where you can type in general question. Oh, one more back, please. Perfect. Um, that you can search here. Um, it's 
great. It's pretty sensitive. So any term that you're putting in, it should pull up anything that's related to it. We also have some great um, just general FAQ topics, um, rules and eligibility is a great one, downloading installation, things along those lines. Um, you'll see Microsoft support. Microsoft's a big one for us. So something to keep in mind is a lot of good topics already called out here. And then we actually have promoted articles that when you scroll down the page, you'll see promoted articles, which means these are the ones that are getting clicked on the most. So you probably might have the same question somebody else did. It's a common question. It's getting clicked a lot. Want to go check those out. So really great resource for you all. Um, and especially with our, again, holiday season coming up, there will be delays, there will be closures. Great resource to use if you're trying to self-serve um, your own support. Next slide, please. But say you do want to contact us, you're more than welcome to contact us at TechSoup. Um, the account management group uh, loves to talk to our members. It's why we got into this. We love nonprofits. We love customer service. We're here to help you as much as we can, the best of our abilities. Um, but as Nick did say, we are a general customer service support. We are not like in-depth product support. So we might have to direct you over to Kevin's team, or we might have to send you over to, um, you know, our partner that created the product, things along those lines. But to get started, you go to the bottom of any of our pages on techsoup.org and click contact us. And that will take you to this page. Next slide, please. Perfect. So this is our contact us page. Um, I do recommend always checking here first, see if there's any um, closures called out, uh, things along those lines. Uh, it's just a great place to start if you're trying to double check what the phone number is, what our hours are, things along those lines. Um, this is also a great place to access our chat. Um, our chat is usually open Monday through uh, Friday. Um, it opens at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Um, after our phones close on Monday through Thursday. And then it's the only contact option all day Friday. So about 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Pacific. Um, that is accessed in the help button at the bottom there. Um, you'll see it highlighted in the bottom right corner. You click the help, gives you access to the TechSoup uh, su uh, support information. And then a little live chat option pops up. Um, something I do wanna call out because we've been hearing this from some members is uh, a lot of companies are up, uh, updating their browsers right now. So like um, Chrome, Firefox, Safari, a lot of them are going through updates. They're asking you to update. Um, we have found that older version of browsers don't seem to see the live chat button. We're not really sure why. So just recommend trying, if you don't see the live chat button, double check our hours. And then also, um, you know, maybe try a different browser or something along those lines usually helps resolve the issue. Um, if you are having, if you're not really into chat, you don't want to use chat, we do have phones available to you. Um, those are open from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. Or sorry, 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. Pacific time. And our phone number is listed there for the call center. So um, this is, again, great place to get started. It's got the TechSoup support button. Then it's got our chat information. Then it's got our call center information. And in the bottom right corner is where you can access uh, the live chat. Perfect. Uh, next slide, please. So this is just kind of a summary of what I just talked about. It's got our hours here from the Contact Us page. So you have it handy in here as well. Um, and also just a reminder that client services, which is the department that account management is in, what we can do is help you manage your TechSoup account. We can answer your eligibility questions. We can help you navigate the resources and requesting products on TechSoup.org. Um, some other things are, oh, I've, I've checked out with this product. I haven't received anything yet. Well, most things, you're gonna get a fulfillment email. So we can help you access that in your account. Things along those lines. What we can't help with is IT support product support, um, in-depth functional product functionality questions. You know, there's a we have a ton of partners and our our cl our client services can only kind of become experts in so many things. So we've focused in on supporting our members with some basic stuff. And then as customer success, they can provide additional support and answer questions. We also have that great help desk services, the IT services on the website. So you need download support. I would go there and look at the affordable 
support services. You can a remote technician to assist you. Um, also highly recommend making sure you check your account for information. That's where you can access validation tokens. Your request history with your invoices and receipts and all that are in there. Um, you can cancel requests in there that I haven't fulfilled. You can update payment. You can find your fulfillment emails. Um, all of that information is in your My Account. So I always recommend logging in, poking around in there, poking around TechSoup support. You usually will find what you're looking for. Um, and you're welcome to have as many agents on the account. So if you have a bunch of folks that you know want to make sure they have access to this information or helping support your work with TechSoup, you're welcome to include as many people as you want. Just please make sure there's someone working on behalf of your organization, since only your organization and its um, owned programs are allowed to access the products they request to the account. So something to keep in mind, account information is great, TechSoup support is great. And we've got a lot of resources on the website from services to articles and webinars like this. And that is all I have. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Kelly. Um, uh, and uh, now I'm going to introduce us to Kevin Mulhall. Um, Kevin uh, supports nonprofits as you try to actually work with some of these technology products that you are uh, that you that you have that you own that you are subscribing to. Um, and uh, Kevin, I'm here on your first slide, all yours. Thank you so much, Nick um, and Kelly. Um, as he said, I'm Kevin from the customer success team. Um, I have one slide, and I am going to be very quick since Nick and Kelly did both an excellent job of kind of communicating what it is that we do. So we operate in kind of a middle ground. Um, before I get into the slide itself, we operate kind of in a middle ground um, between uh, the customer service uh, and the partner or managed support realm. Um, if we were kind of a tiered system, think of us as maybe tier two or tier three, or somebody you engage with um, to Kelly's earlier slide, uh, when there are questions about product functionality. Again, that's not something AMG would handle, but that's something our team would handle. Um, so just a quick overview on us. We are a team of six um, with a combined experience of over 20 years helping nonprofits. Um, where we come in uh, from the engagement uh, perspective um, is that we offer you the ability to gain some additional insights uh, into the products and services um, that are available through us. Um, through a strategic advisory uh, format of engagement. Um, again, as I mentioned, the experience, we're also certified. Our team is myself, six times Microsoft certified, AWS, GCP, uh, Oracle, uh, and working on Cisco. Uh, that should be done next year. Um, the idea is, is that we fill that unique role that um, you, knowing that our how the breadth and depth of our catalog that when you look at something, it's like, and you see it and you go, wow, these are all great products within this category, but which one is right for me? Well, what's right for you based on budget, the internal skill set that your team has, and being able to differentiate between the two with a nonprofit focus is really where we shine. Sure, you could go to something like Captera or G2 um, or GitApp, which are all owned by Gartner, and I am a big fan of, um, but it doesn't, those aren't really necessarily built with the nonprofit in mind. So that's where we kind of step in with that expertise and, and offer that. There's some additional value added services that we offer, such as reviews or discuss on the development of requests for proposals, scopes of work. If you are working with a managed service provider, say locally, um, I've reviewed at least two or three dozen already um, scopes of work this year. Um, some of them have been excellently priced. Uh, a couple of them have been alarmingly priced. Uh, and our goal and our focus is to be able to make sure that you're getting the best value um, out of a service and a service provider. Um, as you mentioned, we work with uh, and have a series of preferred partners, but we understand also that there's not a one size fits all. Um, as far as general engagement works with us is our focus is on having that initial conversation. Uh, we're happy to lay out and address any questions, concerns, comments that you have the, the first part of the planning phase uh, for enabling the ability to have continual access to us. Um, as Nick brought up in an earlier slide, uh, we do have a platform called Quad. We are strongly recommending that people consider joining Quad, not just 
the added benefits of the cost savings that are provided through waived admin fees. But we also maintain communities within Quad where we're able to have very deep conversations about products and deployments, demonstrations, as well as maintaining a couple of Ask Me Anything sessions that occur during the week where you essentially have, again, uh, unrestricted access uh, to me um, and to our team to be able to talk about your advanced uh, strategy and technology planning. So thank you very much. And with that, I'll hand it back to you all. Great, thank you very much, Kevin. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you everybody who joined today's webinar. Um, and uh, I hope that this helped uh, clarify some of the different ways that TechSoup can be helpful and supportive to your nonprofit. Like I, one thing that I always remember in these engagements is um, technology itself is so deep and so broad um, and can get incredibly complex. Um, and so goes your relationship with TechSoup as well. Um, we can be a very easy, low maintenance partner if you're just looking to get support from the catalog because you need QuickBooks. Um, but as you may have sensed, like with some of the things that Kevin was bringing up at the end there, there is some very deep technological expertise here as well um, that can support more advanced users uh, of different tech products who really have to think about big picture enterprise technology platforms and how staff use those and how to configure them. Um, and so we do try to meet you at, at every different level of how technology demands your nonprofit be functional. Um, but uh, again, as I said, you'll get a copy of this deck through email at the conclusion of the webinar. Um, the live links in there should function for you so that you're able to click through. Uh, I want to reiterate again that to use the TechSoup catalog to get access to these services, you do need to be a qualified TechSoup member. And while I know this is a new member orientation, um, every single time we do one, there's definitely folks on here who have not qualified or registered with TechSoup yet. And so... Um, you know, if some of this sounds like it would be helpful for you, please do please do initiate that. You can do it by clicking on the um, join button at the top right corner of the TechSoup website. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. I appreciate your time. Have a great day.